For the entrance of the interest of their servants. Charanti, do wonder. Translation. Vidura said, O Uddhava, because the servants of Vishnu, the Lord, wonder in the interest of serving others, it is quite fit that you kindly describe the self knowledge which, which, with which you have been enlightened by the Lord Himself. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. The servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. They have no interest in human society other than to enlighten it in transcendental knowledge. They are interested in imparting knowledge of the relationship of the living being with the Supreme Lord, the activities in the transcend that transcendental relationship, and the ultimate goal of life. That is the real knowledge which can help society achieve the real aim of human welfare. Knowledge in the matter of the bodily necessities of eating, sleeping, mating and fearing, transformed into various branches of advancement of knowledge, is all temporary. A living being is not the material body, but an, an, an eternal part and parcel of the supreme being, and thus revival of his self-knowledge is essential. Without this knowledge, this human life is baffled. The servants of the Lord Vishnu are entrusted with this responsible work, and so they wander over the earth and to all other planets in the universe. Thus the knowledge which was received by Uddhava directly from the Lord deserves to be distributed in human society, especially to persons like Vidura, who are highly advanced in devotional service of the Lord. Real transcendental knowledge descends in the disciplic succession from, Lord, from the Lord to Uddhava, from Uddhava to Vidura, and so on. Such supreme transcendental knowledge is not possible to achieve by the process of imperfect speculation as performed by the so-called learned mundane, learned mundane wranglers. Vidura was anxious to know from Uddhava that confidential knowledge known as Paramam Stittidim, Stittim in which the Lord is known by his transcendental pastimes. Although Vidura was older than Uddhava, he was anxious to become a servant of Uddhava in the transcendental relationship. This formula of transcendental disciplic succession is taught by Lord Chaitanya also. Lord Chaitanya advises that one receive transcendental knowledge from anyone, whether a brahmana or a shudra, a householder or a sannyasi, provided that person is factually conversant with the science of Krishna. 
A person who knows the science of Krishna is factually a bona fide spiritual master. She should not even have this done, stop it, come in a boot to me, sign up, back in a mayan, the back is slap it and become. Jesh Krishna Shaitanya, Prabhunichananda, she did not have a Radhana, she was sorry, go back to Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, so yes, as, was, as we read, we're reading the chapter Vidura Approaches Maitreya. So just to give a little bit of a recap, um, Vidura is pacifying his bereavement with transcendental knowledge. That's kind of the sum of this chapter. So, and how is he doing that? He's doing that by receiving it through disciplic succession. So um, he was aggrieved and um, Uddhava is helping him by sharing transcendental knowledge. <clears throat> so um, Lord Krishna, so this is disciplic succession, so Lord Krishna spoke and met with Uddhava and then Uddhava is telling Vidura, so, and therefore Vidura is overcoming his grief. Um, because it's not ordinary knowledge, it's not just placatory, it's actually transcendental. Therefore, Fidura is overcoming his, his grief. Of course, any personality in the Srimad Bhagavatam, as I understand it, is no ordinary personality. If you are like Fidura associating with the likes of Uddhava, who was associating with Lord Krishna, then you're doing pretty okay on the transcendental platform. But still, it's an example for for us, so he has he is aggrieved, and Uddhava is helping him with his his grief. Actually, Lord Krishna is helping him with his grief through Uddhava. So this is an example that above everything else, this knowledge is the greatest, the topmost knowledge. <coughs> so Fedora is very fortunate, and similarly, we are we are very fortunate. So Dura will go on to approach Maitreya. <clears throat> so this is an example of following instructions and following in the footsteps of the Acharyas so we can also take shelter of that. We also see in Uddhava wonderfully, uh, we see the example of what to do when you feel great separation from perhaps your spiritual master, perhaps other devotees, perhaps some devotees experience separation from Krishna, maybe like Prabhupada, I'm not sure. Um, so what to do in this example? What is Uddhava doing? So because he he saw Krishna and um, Krishna blessed him and afterwards he felt great separation because it was so wonderful. <laughs> it was the ultimate of everything. So he felt separation, Ripralamba, and had great greed, Loyam, to see him again. So what did, what did he do? Then he decided to try to um, see him, to follow his instructions, sorry. So in um, the previous verse, 3.4.21, Soham da dashana vada, dashana means to see, yogi gati yuta prabho, Gamishe Daitam Tasya Badarashram Mangalam. My dear Vidura, now I am mad for want of the pleasure of seeing him. And just to mitigate this, I am now proceeding to Badakshrama in the Himalayas for association, as I have been instructed by him. So Uddhava deals with his separation by following the instructions of the Lord. So like a good disciple in the disciplic succession, you follow the instructions of your master and therefore you can appease yourself when you're feeling separation. <clears throat> and you can also, as a side note, try to please your spiritual master by doing that as well. So you and everyone can only benefit. You put yourself aside. But ultimately, because of Krishna's mercy, you actually get the greatest gift. 
So um, this is what you do if you feel separation from your spiritual master, from those that teach you, those that are close to us, the devotees. Then um, you follow instructions. You put you put your heart there. <coughs> you put your energy into that. So then the connection is always there. Um, separation materially is different from this kind of separation that we're talking about, but on the transcendental platform, that, that's what you can do, vani over vapu. <coughs> the other thing you can do is to seek out the association of those that are like them. So Vidura is associating with Uddhava, who is like Krishna and has been associating with Krishna and understands Krishna's mood and instructions. So therefore, then he is gaining benefit from that. <coughs> and like we mentioned before, then his grief and disturbance has, is being overcome. <coughs> so, we, so we soak up this association as humble servants. Um, we try the best we can despite our ego, our wants, our anatas, everything. Who, who can profess to be perfect that I cannot? Maybe some of you. But in association, then we try to, we try to shed these skins. We try and become a servant and become a proper recipient, recipient of this knowledge. It's not not easy, but it's worth it. <clears throat> we get a little bit of bliss sometimes, a little bit of joy from, especially when someone is pleased with us or. Um, I don't know, we get things sometimes, we, Krishna gives us a gift. So, um, what we're talking about here are very special devotees. They're not ordinary individuals. So, Uddhava himself, <coughs> in previous verses, verse number 30, if I remember correctly, no, that's incorrect. But Uddhava was blessed by Krishna to be the foremost of my devotees. Does anyone remember? what that meant that Krishna gave Uddhava because he was the most foremost of his devotees. He gave him something. Does anyone remember? He, he gave, gave him knowledge. He says, because you are the foremost of my devotees, then I, get, gave you, I can give you knowledge which you can pass on, which is what he's, he's doing. Also, later on, um, in verse 35, Vidura expresses tears because he's been remembered by Krishna. Ecstatic tears of love, just at the thought that Krishna remembered him. So, on that on a side note, Krishna never forgets us. Like, um, the Guru never forgets us, the devotees also. Like, but we, sometimes we can feel forgotten, but Krishna never forgets us. He's just waiting for us to kind of get it together basically. <laughs> Once we get it together a little bit more then we have a better understanding. <clears throat> so in coming, in, so in reading Srimad Bhagavatam and hearing from devotees we have an opportunity to come close to these devotees, these special devotees that are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam that are in the <coughs> Sattvic succession. <clears throat> So the verse about Fedura um, expressing tears is understanding that he was remembered by Lord Krishna while quitting this world. Fedura began to cry loudly, overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. Does anyone remember there's another devotee in Chaitanya Charanamrita, in Chaitanya Lila, who also cries very loudly in the night, tears of love for Krishna. He t cries so much that the neighbors think that he's hungry. They cry, they cry and they're, they're, they're like absconding him, they're, they're berating him. He must be hungry all night, crying. Yes, Shudha, Shudha, the banana, Latin leaf seller. Nimai comes and every day, he has holes in his cloth, holes in his house. Every day Nimai comes to him and, and wants, to, wants to bargain with him. He, he gives him it for free and still <laughs> he says, I cannot give him anymore. No, you have the greatest wealth. What wealth do you have? What wealth did he have? Love of Krishna. He was crying in the night out for Krishna and his neighbors were completely, didn't understand 
Who can understand the ecstasy of, of love? We can read about it. <laughs> so we can look at ourselves a little bit, um, in kind of in compare. We can't compare ourselves to these individuals, but it, we can also, you know, oh, it's too high. Like we can't be like this. Yes, that's true, but. It's an opportunity to kind of be a bit self-reflective. And the more self-reflective you are, the more you can kind of advance in transcendental knowledge because then all the hard stuff comes, the pride, the everything. So <clears throat> without being too self-deprecating, because that's also not very humble actually, <laughs> it comes from pride, um, we can read these pastimes and take a little look at ourselves and where we are. Um, so these devotees just have serving Krishna and his devotees in mind and following instructions. Um, they're not really thinking, as I understand it, of fulfilling their needs. To try and kind of just focus on fulfilling our needs is kind of glorified animalistic life, to put it bluntly. Because animals are into like um, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada, does anyone remember what the word he uses instead of defending? It's quite interesting. It starts with F. Fearing. Fearing, yes. Because animals are fearing. My spiritual master, His Holiness Kadanda Kalana Swami, sometimes speaks about birds and how when birds are eating, even when birds are eating, they're always looking to see, is someone going to come and attack me? And this is, this is animal life. I must admit, I've just come back from Vrindavan and sometimes when you're eating in Vrindavan also you have to be <laughs> fearful because there's so many monkeys or um, just, yeah, or even getting prashadam in the prashadam line you can be <laughs> hidden, like pushed and everything so you begin to identify a little bit but ultimately it's different. But yes, these animals, this is what their, what their, their karma is, that they're living out their karma. <clears throat> so we have an advantage because we can think, we have consciousness, so a different kind of consciousness, I should say, more, more advanced consciousness, ready for being receptacles for spiritual knowledge, whereas an animal has their karma, and unless blessed by a devotee, then there or the Lord, then they are living out their karma, changing bodies, changing bodies, changing bodies. We are different. We still have to eat. We still need to sleep unless you're an extremely advanced soul. We still need to keep ourselves safe. We, um, yeah, and we, we also sometimes enter the Grihasta Ashram and these kinds of things. But it's a different platform from a transcendental platform and you can do all that and have a transcendental consciousness or you can do all that and have a mundane consciousness and that is the difference. You do not have to be a sannyasi or be like a sannyasi or in the you, like a sannyasi is good, but in a, you don't have to change your life dramatically is what I'm saying. That, that's a wonderful thing, but if you have the right consciousness, but you can also just have a transcendental consciousness and you maintain your body and everything to what you need so you can engage in service. And anything else is a misuse of Krishna's energies. And then there are consequences for that. Krishna is not mean. There is a Christian kind of idea of God, this idea of being God-fearing. And of course we respect Krishna, but God is, and um, Krishna, excuse me, is not our enemy. He's not here to be mean to us or something. But there is just like any good parent or teacher, there is consequences for our actions there's, and the good teacher will show you your um, the things you need to improve on within yourself for a greater purpose for the spiritual knowledge so they will I think it was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur who mentioned that it's not a um, good friend who praises you all the time it's someone that will um, 
show you where you can improve, and that's very true. It's much easier to naturally have respect and to feel closer in the heart, actually, with your sounding sentimental to someone who is is revealing in whichever way possible, which has many ways, our shortcomings, things we need to improve, because that is a person that is our well-wisher that wants us to move forward. So, um, and sometimes that person comes in a form of, um, that we're not expecting it. I was going to mention it later, but maybe perhaps I will now. In the purple, it should have probably mentioned at the end, um, Lord Chaitanya advises that one, one receive transcendental knowledge from anyone, whether a brahmana, a shudra, a householder, or a sannyasi, provided that person is factually conversant with the science of Krishna. Um, but it, as we're starting out and throughout our life, it's important to also seek to others who know who is factually conversant in Krishna Consciousness, and that's why we have the site ISKCON, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, because it is a place where um, we are sure it's bona fide. That's why we have classes, we have senior devotees, we have gurus like this, and um, we have temple presidents like Ajita Prabhu, who are holding it all together and making sure that we are in a space where we are receiving the knowledge actually. <clears throat> so, um, so we're fulfilling our needs, as I mentioned, um, not in order to kind of make ourselves, our life better, although I'm very guilty of always thinking this way, better situation, better this, better that, um, and it's, it really, it's okay, we just need to, the more we notice, then psychology they say, like once you notice something, then that's a step towards being kind of free from it. But actually, we do need to fulfill our needs if you're a grihasta, you have certain obligations and you also, we also have to look after our body. There's no point getting sick, what use are we going to be to anyone? If we're not ready to be like the Goswamis and live under a tree, then we're only going to become angry like <laughs> people and then how can we impart any knowledge to, to anyone? So maybe, you know, have some prasadam or have a nice situation if it helps you. Um, the point is that it can be favourable towards devotional service and that's our aim. That's the greater principle to follow instructions. <clears throat> so we can't imitate these devotees um, because their, their devotion comes and surrender comes from taste. <clears throat> Taste comes from seva, from service, and from receiving knowledge. So the more we can serve, if we're not there yet, we can engage in service combined with um, immersing ourselves in transcendental knowledge, in reading, in hearing classes, in speaking to those who understand more than us. And therefore we get a little taste. We can go in Harinam Sankatam, we can go on book distribution, we can chant congregationally, we can go in kirtan in the morning time. You get a little taste. Krishna gives us a little taste. Maya is strong, our mind is strong, our desires are strong, our natas, our conditioning, everything is so strong. Yet, eventually it's like the fan, Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy. The fan is switched off, it takes some time before it actually stops thing like that. So we shouldn't lose heart and it's not, oh, I've got to just like be perfect and it's not working and oh, this is really too hard and I'm just, I can't, this is like ridiculous. But no, like the devotees can go hard because they can, they've got taste. So like, you know, like the, the very, very advanced devotees. So, and it happens naturally. Naturally you get a taste for stuff. You eat prashanam, you eat vegetarian, you don't want the other stuff after a while. Even within prasadam, you start to want a particular type of prasadam, more prasadam that's very like sattvic, kind of all prasadam is sattvic. We are not friending prasadam, but like, um, I don't know, different types of prasadam. The nuances within your spiritual life that you can be attuned to. 
So, um, <clears throat> like I said, taste comes from service and comes from transcendental knowledge and associating with those, we learn how to actually even receive this knowledge. Otherwise, you can read and read and read, but if you actually imbibe it, you need to be in the association of those. Otherwise, you can take all sorts of things from Bhagavatam to support your own nonsense, speaking from experience. <laughs> and the Vedas are said to be like a ripened mango. Um, and the sweet thing about this is that it gets passed down and the more it gets passed down it becomes sweeter so we're starting out, I speak for myself in our devotional lives after how many millions of lifetimes in different bodies yeah we have this amazing, we've got this gift because the mango when it's come to us is so sweet you know, we've got, apart from that, it's Lord Chaitanya's um, mercy in this age. So we've got a lot of concessions and we've got this mango, this faith knowledge that's really sweet. So in some ways we're very fortunate. The unfortunate thing is our, how entangled we all are. Well, I mean. <clears throat> so that's the cyclic succession. It's not a wooden process. Vidura and Uddhava are having a lovely conversation that's full of love. <clears throat> Similarly, when our charyas are giving us, us this knowledge, it's also with love. It's sweet. It's sweet if we can only see it. Srila Prabhupada writes, and I think if I remember correctly, the introduction to Bhagavad Gita that our eyes must be anointed with love of God to be able to see Krishna and similarly to be able to really taste this ne the nectarian sweetness of Vedic knowledge we have to have some taste and like I said taste comes from service, from surrender we have to surrender away from our egos our everything that stops us and we all know it starts to become we start to become we realize where it comes up you might not know what to do yet but it's, that's um, helpful. So otherwise, um, <clears throat> just as like Srila Prabhupada writes in this purport, um, all of these trying to maintain ourselves just for material reasons, the, it, it's because it's actually temporary that is why we should not put our energy into this. So um, transcendental knowledge is such shit and under. So it's... Um, it's eternal and it's full of bliss and nanda. Um, whereas <clears throat> maintaining ourselves, just focusing on that, that's temporary. So the animals, they have temporary, like um, they're fulfilling their needs temporarily, then they're getting out of their body and going to the next one and the next one. We have the opportunity for eternal knowledge, like I said, so um, we can go for that. So to be materially okay is reasonable and it does help, depending on where we're at. But the key is not to get caught within it, um, get caught up too much within it, because that will be detrimental for us. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada um, translates it as Sri Shanapad and he talks about how everyone has their own quota. So he says everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. So we're not the proprietors. And one should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota. And one must not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong. So we have our quota and human, why I'm mentioning this is because when we are materially kind of entangled, we have where our consciousness is metered that way, we have a tendency towards thinking only of our needs, and we also can be quite greedy with overeating, and particularly in the West, we tend to overeat, we amass a lot of possessions, which, like I said, can be a good thing, <laughs> but it's about consciousness. Um, and animals, they don't 
often exceed their quota. So Srila Prabhupada, in the Nectar of Devotion classes that he gave in Vrindavan on October the 25th, 1972, he gives the example of a bag of rice. So he said that if a bag of rice is left in a marketplace, then the birds and animals will come and take a little bit and then they'll leave it. Like even I've seen in Vrindavan, monkeys are completely nuts for want of a better word. And still the, there will be like, people will put out food and stuff or they'll just like they'll leave the rubbish there for them to eat. And still they will leave some, they will not take it all. And Srila Prabhupada says that people, they will, if they're not in the correct consciousness, they will just take the whole bag of rice home with them and then they will like, you know, have for themselves. Um, <clears throat> so we cannot, it's not, I'm not saying animals are better, I'm just saying that if we have an opportunity to use our consciousness in a different way, like Vidura and Uddhava, so that, that's the aim. If we uh, use our quota, then we get more entangled in fulfilling our needs. And you can't ever fulfill your needs. There's always going to be some discomfort in this material world. Sukhudukha, happiness and just stress. You cannot, you, that's why we're here, you know, so we realize that. <clears throat> so the difference um, between the devotee and those that are materially tangled, the difference between I speak for myself and say Vidura and Uddhava is that um, they're not materially entangled and they're, they're not forgetting Krishna, they're remembering always. They've got something greater at hand and the remembrance of Krishna is, is what sets them apart and even more beautifully it's their greed for seeing Krishna. Uddhava is beside himself in separation. He can't, like, also, uh, I think it's Narutam Das Thakur who writes, um, I don't remember the name of the song, but where he writes that, and this is quite visceral, that he'll smash his head again, like, where has my Nataraj, where has my dancing Lord Chaitanya gone? I will smash my head against a stone in separation, you know, very high, high level of separation in consciousness that we can't imitate. But still, wow, could you imagine feeling that, that so much love in separation? <clears throat> so we're not there yet, but in the meantime, we offer, in, offer service and we keep it in mind. And when we're making decisions, our decisions go towards that goal of becoming more <clears throat> transcendental and Krishna conscious. The interesting thing about this um, purport is Srila Prabhupada mentions how it's like about service actually and he mentions in the first line that the servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. Now this might sound shocking. How can we be the servant to society if they're doing like we are we are living by the regular principles. We are chanting, we are doing good work, we're like transcendental work. How can we put ourselves as the servants of um, society? But actually, we are, because when we are thinking we are great with what we're doing, we are just instruments and out of love and compassion. When you really love someone, then you want to share the best thing you have or the thing that you has helped you a lot. And in that way, then we are serving others. So in that way, we and we're serving them by transcendental knowledge. <clears throat> so he writes that, um, This is like the real knowledge which, which can help society achieve the real aim of human well, welfare. A living being is not the material body, but an eternal part and parcel of the supreme being, and thus revival of the self-knowledge is essential. Without this knowledge, the human life is baffled. 
I remember one of the first Srimad Bhagavatam classes I ever heard was in Melbourne Temple and it was about welfare. And I at the time had many friends that were into doing food distribution. It was all vegetarian and stuff and like welfare work. Welfare work is good, I just want to give a disclaimer. But And I remember the speaker was saying that the ultimate welfare work is to give them transcendental knowledge and I remember feeling very indignant. I know this is not correct because we still need to help people and this is true but it's like the greatest that you can give someone is transcendental knowledge. Um, It's kind of like, to give a very raw example, there might be someone who is addicted to drugs, very badly addicted to drugs. Um, they're not eating, they're not sleeping, they have nowhere to sleep, they have no money, they're unclean, you know, because they can't look after themselves. You can give money, you can feed them, you can clean them up and give them a place to sleep, but they will, because of their addiction, their mind, their illness in their mind and heart, because of trauma, because normally addictions come from trauma, they will go straight back to generally, to um, taking drugs unless there's something done for their mind, for their trauma. This is not even speaking on the transcendental platform. Um, Similarly, if someone is very materially entangled and materially distressed, you can appease their material problems, but it only lasts so long before another distress comes. You give transcendental knowledge, then then you can help them eternally. On the material platform it looks like, how is this book going to help me? How is chanting on the street going to help me? How is coming to the temple going to help me? It's because it's eternally beneficial so many lifetimes and we can't even see it ourselves. So this is, this is the wealth. This is what it means to pass the mango, to give welfare to others, to be servants of society. The other things also you can do, sure, why not? His Holiness Jade Veta Maharaj recently gave a class in Vrindavan and he mentioned the concept of food for death and this is the idea of us not giving knowledge along with food and prasadam out to people. He said that the best thing is to give the knowledge with it, otherwise what are you really, what are we really doing? <clears throat> so, um, we have an opportunity, because we have in co- come in contact with this knowledge, to also share it with others, to pass the mango as it were, and um, that's really wonderful. <clears throat> To be able to serve joyfully, which is one of the qualities of someone who is advanced, um, we have to develop love for Krishna and his devotees, and we do that by serving out of love. Um, Srila Prabhupada uses the example in marriage of um, a wife and husband who do not know each other very well, and at first they are serving each other out of duty and then later the love comes. So similarly, we may begin to serve out of duty because we don't have that in our heart, but then later on we do. Um, So it's not not cheap. (coughs) Then perhaps, hopefully one day, we can all get at the stage of Uddhava and Vidura who have loved Krishna so much that they just really can't help but to share. The whole Bhagavatam is full of it. Narada Muni travels around the world, all the world, all the universe, is sharing out of love, you know, they can't help themselves, Srila Prabhupada. Like, why would he go through so much austerity if, um, if like he was 70, in his 70s, you know, working so hard, but how to, you know, like when he was in the streets of, Delhi or Agra, I can't remember where it was. He had no money, like hardly no money. He was just printing his back to Godhead. He was getting kicked by a bull. You know, the printer guy, excuse me, he was like, Swamiji, what are you doing? Like, 
you have no money and you're printing these books, like you're printing these magazines and just why don't you chill out and, and, and just like stay somewhere and you're such an old man. Um, Shumati Maraji, I think that's her name, who also organized his ticket on the steamship, told him many times, you should just stay home, you know, like, just, you're an old man, what can you do, you know, you should take care of yourself. But he had such love to share, he wanted to share so much that he worked very hard. He didn't stop, even when he was traveling, he had heart attacks and he got sick and everything and he didn't stop. And some of our own gurus as well are very similar. And it's, it's a wonderful example, but it's also because I believe they can't help themselves. So that's, that comes from loving to share. Like kids, a very mundane example, but kids when they have something amazing happens. They come home, like maybe it's like an amazing thing at school or something, and they come home, the first thing they do, they have to tell their parents, like, and they can't help themselves, they've got to like, let it out, they've got to say, like, or if you have something, you ring up your friends or a close mem family member, and you want to like, tell them something that like, amazing happens, it's kind of similar. So this is the essence of disciplic succession. <clears throat> So, in the last few months, I've had an opportunity to do a lot of Harinam, Sankitan, book distribution. Um, for the first time in my devotional life, I have um, been doing primarily those services. And a lot of the time, every day, it was a bit of a Hare Krishna sabbatical. And I just want to share with you all that in relation to this verse, I was thinking that actually, like, if you ever want to try it, it's true service to society through sharing. It's like one of the easiest ways to share this knowledge with, with others because it's an opportunity for others to get a little taste of what we're tasting. Um, so we're sharing knowledge, sharing the holy name, um, and also deepening relationships with devotees through service. Because the, I say it's austere in the sense, not in a negative way, but there is austerities in your sacrificing some things lovingly, but you're sacrificing. Um, and so there's a thing that when you do that with devotees, when you go out on book distribution, when you go out on Harinam Sankatan, that it seems to be me, in my experience, that they're the devotee relationships that last the longest. Your friendships, your, because you're also, you meet some crazy people on the street, you also some wonderful people, and it's like you have to be fixed within yourself and you take shelter of each other's association as well. Um, I did some book distribution alone and that's also nice, but it's much more fun when in the association of devotees. Because you have a, a buffer, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, you, you debrief and you also, it's joyful for yourself to see others relishing sharing the holy name and book distribution as well. So we also get a taste through that. So like I said, Krishna is not a meanie. It's not like we have to be austere and it's grueling process that you're treading water and finding it very difficult. No, it can be a whole lot of fun. And the more fun we have in it, the more joyfully we're performing our service the more others are going to be attracted to that because you taste the sweetness. <clears throat> I would like to finish by just um, noting that the best way also to share this knowledge with others is to remember that we're only here 
and we only can share anything by the mercy of Guru and Garanga and the devotees. We, we can't otherwise. If we're on the altar, it's because of the mercy of Guru and Garanga and Shiva Prabhupada. If we're even sitting in the temple, it's because of the mercy of Guru and Garanga and the devotees who organize to build this space, you know. Because otherwise we can just um, get a little puffed up that and then that stands in a way, and actually people sense it, especially when you're on the street distributing books. Um, it's much easier, people are much more receptive when it's like you're being an instrument rather than <clears throat> professing to know it all. Because then we're a bit like them, you know, who can profess to be perfect? Like, when I meet people on the street, I think, well, you know, like, I'm not so different actually. <laughs> So by remembering the mercy of our spiritual master and Krishna, then we can give more actually. And we can, yeah, share that love so that <clears throat> Lachitanya opened the storehouse of the love of God had and inundated the whole world. But some of us have umbrellas up, but some kind souls teach us to put our bags down on all these material attachments and put down our umbrella. Then once we get over flooded, then we can share with others. Then when we do Harinam or book distribution, Harinam is a good example because you get these symbolic waves of people actually, it depends on what kind of Harinam it is, but you get literally waves of people coming like in from all sides and then it's um, yeah, quite amazing. So I might finish there. It is 8.30, there's time for one question, or is there any questions? Shri Paragana, Prabhu? Maybe speak loudly, I think it's okay. <laughs> okay. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 868, that uh, one of the preachers is uh, message to my devotees is, is 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 the most dear to me and at the end he'll come back to me. So we all understand that, you know, the service to the the Vaishnavas is very very dear to Krishna. When we were serving Vaishnavas. So you're talking about you know, service to the people in general, the highest service to the people in general is giving them the, the greatest mercy of Shil Prabhupada's books, Prashad and Rainam Sankta. So can we also see that that is service to Vaishnavas and that's very dear to Krishna because they're all Vaishnavas in fact, they've just forgotten. So that's, can we see that that's also Vaishnavas say the two? Yeah, sure, of course. It's not like us and them, that's for sure. Um, however, Srila Prabhupada, he mentions in the purport that um, <clears throat> thus the knowledge which was received by Uddhava directly from the Lord deserves to be distributed in human society, especially to persons like Vidura, who are highly advanced in the devotional service of the Lord. So um, I'm not discounting what you're saying, I'm just saying that... Um, it's, yeah, like we're distributing the knowledge to everyone and we're also being discerning as well that knowing that when we distribute knowledge to a great soul, like whatever is distributing to Vidura, then it has like multiple benefits as well because then that per individual then distributes to, to more, more people. But yes, of course, whereas maybe someone we meet on the street, it might end there, like possibly. <laughs> but it's, 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 yeah, they are also, everyone is a Vaishnava. And we're, if we are, if we identify as, well, actually the correct consciousness is, we are aspiring Vaishnavas. Well, I am anyway. Like, how can we profess to be a Vaishnava? Um, isn't it, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur says Vaishnava, okay? Like, what, what is a Vaishnava? Like, who are we? We are always aspiring Vaishnavas, so also they are Vaishnavas. And, and Srila Prabhupada says that we can learn 
like learn for anyone well as long as they're conversant in the knowledge but I, I told this story before but I remember in Melbourne Temple when one drunkard on the street during Harinam told me I wasn't chanting properly and it was true. I was facing out and they were yelling at me that you're not even do chanting properly because I was feeling really shy and um, you know mental and stuff and you're not even chanting properly and it was it was very true. Like I took it and I felt like thank you. <laughs> so yeah, you can't. but when someone who is our senior, senior devotee or our spiritual master or temple president or someone who is very conversant in this knowledge tells us and we also take, they can help us to really advance. But yeah, it's very true. They're also, yeah, everyone's a right. Everyone is potential Vaishnava or Vaishnava is true. Thank you very much, Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki, Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki, Gaurav Yamanandini.